Okay, First Chronicles chapter 21, verse 18. Much detail, much lessons to come from, maybe at least this one and one more. And the angel of the Lord commanded Gad to say to David that David should go up. And when you read the gospel, they went up to Jerusalem. It's a mountain. Shall go up. Let me find my place. And set an altar unto the Lord in the threshing floor of Ornath. So that, there's a threshing floor right now at this spot, and in that threshing floor would be the most holy place, where he would, where he has gathered wheat of the Jebusite. And David went up as the saint of God. Look at David obeying God, which he spanked in the name of the Lord, Jehovah, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. And Ornad turned back. And saw the angel and his four sons with him hid themselves. All right, so let's look at the scene here. We don't know how many David's servants are there, but we know David and one. Ornad, two. He's got four sons, so that is at least a minimum of six people there. The Bible says where two or three are gathered together. There I am in the midst of them. The Bible says, out of witness of two or three witnesses, it shall be established. It is a proven fact that you could take the court. That if you could resurrect these six men. And anybody else to be there. And bring them up before the court of the United Nations of the world in New York City. And bring them there into the hall and say, we were there. One more night of lesson we'll talk about. We were there when David brought that property. That dumb of the rock needs to go bye-bye. But that's not going to happen. The United Nations is not going to give up their curse of cursing Israel. And the fact is that it's not going to be man that's going to walk up to man and say, that land is God's land. It will be the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ when he comes established to the land. Establish a truly holy city. That city ain't holy today. It will be under Jesus Christ. And we have the documented proof that we could go into a courtroom and say, here it is. But guess what? You go into a courtroom today, especially so in America, especially so in a Muslim country, especially so in New York City and maybe England, and say, well, here's a document of the King James Bible, what, what is going on over there in Jerusalem. We don't believe that. We don't have it. Listen, even the churches are leaving the Bible. Even Christians won't read the Bible. But that threshing floor of Ornan. And David went up saying, David went up at the saying of Gad. As soon as Gad spoke, David's doing. Verse 20. And Ornan turned back and saw the angel and his four sons with him hid themselves. Now Ornan was threshing wheat so he's not using the threshing floor he is threshing, he is cutting down the wheat right now preparing to use that threshing floor. And David said to Ornan grant me the place of this threshing floor. Look at the free will. 21. David came to Ornan and looked and saw David. Here's his big angel. Here comes David. And went out of the threshing floor. I guess he was in the threshing floor. Went out of the threshing floor. Okay. And bowed himself to David with his face to the ground. Ornan is a Jebusite. He is not an Israelite. And look at him giving authority to a Jewish king that is not his people. And according to the law, according to God in this promised land that he given to the Jews, if the Jews had done what God has told them to do, there would be no Jebusites right now. They are to be wiped out. But in the end times of Joshua, in the times of Judges, they fooled around. They, they married into what they weren't to marry. And they spared their lives and all that. And you have these people. That should not be living. Living. And this man who's not of Israel. 
who seems to have peace while in the land that God's given Israel, approaches the king and falls down before the king and honors the king of Israel, not the Jebusite king. And he bowed himself to David with his face to the ground. Look at that. Then David said to Ornan, grant me the place of this threshing floor. Again, there it is. It's a free will. David could step up and say, hey, I'm the king. Eminent domain. It's mine. He has the power. He's under the power of God right now, the power of that angel of the Lord. David says, grant it to me. That I may build an altar therein unto the Lord, that's Jehovah, all capitals, that thou shalt grant it me for full price. Now listen. David's not coming under the power of the government. David's not coming within the domain. I'll give you... A nickel for every dollar that that place is worth. David said, what is the value of this threshing floor? And I will give you full, full price. That the plague may be stayed from the people. And that would be the Jewish people in Jerusalem. Right now, the angel stopped. God says, stop, I repent. That angel stuff, he's got that sword, he turns the gag, he said, you better get David working right now. And if David don't do it, that's, that angel's going back to work, and David, you'll be dead. With Ornan, with his four sons, and anybody else in Jerusalem. If David does not do what he's supposed to do right now, prescribed by Gad, the entire area of Jerusalem will be wiped out. Look at verse 15. And God sent an angel into Jerusalem to destroy it. And as he was destroying, imagine if Gad came up with the, the modern version of the Bible, the Word of God of that time, of what God told him to do. That angel was that angel was going through the land and just killed and killed and killed and killed until there was nothing left but that angel. You better make sure you have the word of God correctly. And modern Bibles do not have it correctly. And David goes up to this man. The fate of this of the nation of Israel. The, the area of Jerusalem. And David rises upon Onan. And David as the king could go. Hey I'm taking that land. Taking it for God. Is that not what the Catholic Church is taking land for God. In the name of God. Of course, not the God of the Bible. Has not uh, the, the history of America, of the pilgrims who turned congregational and the Episcopal Church has not gone in the steps of America and say, this is our land, we're taking it because it's God's will. Has not the Catholics come to this nation after the discovery of Christopher Columbus under the name of Italy and to say, we're going to steal your gold, we're going to steal your people, and then we're going to convert you to Christianity. If you don't, we'll kill you. Is that not the ways of the Muslims? They say, listen, you repent unto Allah and believe on Allah, we'll take off your neck. David does not do that. Though the children of Israel were told for the Jebusites, kill them, wipe them out. David says, grant me and I'll give you full price. He is not going to use the price of blood to build the foundation of Jesus Christ. You say, Jesus Christ? Oh, yeah. Because later on, we've already read last night that Jesus is going to walk in this temple. Jesus is going to be teaching this temple. Jesus is going to knock over the tables in this temple. And then we're going to go into the millennium and Jesus will be there with the priests at the temple. Now, the temple of the Mormons built by blood. The, the uh, I can't think of his name now. Uh, Battle it out with husbands or wives that that man st stole. I can't think of the founder of the Mormons. Whatever his name is, who cares? Probably not in the last book of life, but I don't know. They had ba bloody battles. Catholics had bloody battles. David says, no blood. It's funny, David's been a man of war. He's battled under... Ju under uh, Saul, King Saul. He's taken down the giant. And he's taken down giants. 
But when it comes to the angel of the Lord, there he is. And it comes to that place that God will settle down. He says, no blood. I'll give you full price. Now, how about this one here? It says full price. Verse 22. Is not our salvation paid in full? Is it not the blood of Jesus, the blood of God? Acts 20, 28. Are we not our own, but we are bought with a price? We are bought with a full. There it is. Full price right there where Jesus will rip that temple, the, the veil of that temple into a full price for that area right there. Where Jesus Christ will enter the most holy place of all, tear it, and say, this is my blood, God. But that's your blood too, God. Acts 20, 28. We're purchased with a full, we're not purchased with half a price. We're not purchased with, with, with a, a quarter of price. God didn't take a coupon from Jesus. Full price or no salvation at all. There it is, full price. Gave us a type of price. That the plague may be stayed from the people. If I am not paid with the full price of Jesus Christ, I have a plague that will stay forever. As I burn in hell forever, there's no payment of full, full price. If you do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, you will pay that full price of your iniquity, burning forever, to pay for that price, which you'll never pay in full. And yet Jesus Christ paid it in full. And once he pays in full, once you become washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, the plague of hell, the plague of eternal damnation, the plague of, of torments forever, it stopped. Never to happen again. And Orlan said to David, take it to thee. Well, what? You mean he's not going to have a sign? He's not going to have a petition? He's not going to run to a lawyer? He tells David, hey, take it. This is this guy's livelihood. And a king that is not of his people steps up and says, I want that and I'll give you full price. Take it. There's a woman. She's going out in the fields one day. She's grabbing two sticks. She's going to make her a couple cakes and her and her son are going to drop dead. Elijah walks up to her and says, make me some cakes first. Okay. Little boy. He has a couple fishes going home or wherever he's going. He's got two fishes and the, the apostles come up and say, Jesus would like to have those fish. Okay. And look what Jesus did with it. Look what that, that, that widow woman, look, I mean, she probably picked her head in that house and keep filling. But it survived and kept going. This land here is known as Ornan's land. First Chronicles 21, verse 18 on. It's a different spelling in 2 Samuel, but it's still the same man. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. And forever is settled. You see Ornan, O-R-N-A-N. Forever it's settled that he gave that land to David. And we'll talk about the title deeds, Lord willing, on another night. It's forever recorded that land was his land. And he says, David, take it. And Ornan said, David, take it. To thee. To thee. It's not for David. That's not David's. If he were, David would say, okay, thank you. It's not David's. David told him it's for the Lord. And let my Lord the king do, Lord the king, respect. He may not like David. Who knows? Do that which is good in his eyes. So, here it is. It's yours, David. Lo, I give thee the oxen. That would be your tractor back then. That would be your, your workhorse of the farm. They'd be treading out the, the, the wheat. They would be helping with the wheat. Also, I will, yeah, I give thee oxen for, all, for the burnt offerings. All right, that's to God. Ornad, a Jebusite, non-Israelite, says, I'll give you those oxen so you can worship God. That's quite interesting. And the threshing instruments for wood. You know where that was? That's Genesis 22. Look at Genesis. To keep your place there, but look at Genesis 22. Genesis 22. Many, many, many years ago. Verse 6, 22, 6. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son. 
and took the fire in his hand. You know what Orvin would have to do with that those instruments of wood? David's going to purchase it. We're going to look at it. But you know what? After David, you know what that Orvin would have to do with that? Here, take the wood, put it on David. David and Isaac, a type of Jesus Christ. And the wheat, whole pile of wheat there for a meat offering. Now look at that. Mark that. That proves right there that meat offering is not just ham, hamburger, lamb, lamb chops, chicken. A meat offering is, offer, is also an offering of grain. People have problem with that. And even I have a note here that says meal. Meat means meal. No. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. Wheat can be a, can be meat. So when you got a vegetarian who's in a wheat diet and stuff like that, say, hey, you're eating meat, according to the Bible. I give it all. Wow, what a, what a statement upon where Christ is going to go in and offer his blood without spot, without sin. I give it all to you, David. What would a modern Christian do? Oh, yeah, thank you, thank you. I'll take it. What would a non-Christian do? Oh, yeah, thank you. I want more. And King David said to Ornan, Nay, but I will verily buy it for the full price. And when Jesus Christ lays on the cross and dies, he paid it full. There's a track out there, paid in full. And there's a, there's a hymn out there, paid in full. Exactly what it is, not a shekel more, not a shekel less. For I will not take that which is thine for the Lord. Well, that's kind of interesting. I will take what is yours. For the Lord, but it was for me I do it. <laughs> that's, that's almost like the statement. If I was doing for the kingdom of Israel, if I was doing for the land of Israel, maybe I would take it by force. <clears throat> but since it's for God, I'm going to take it by full price. Nor offer burnt offerings without cost. If I'm going to offer a burnt offering for the Lord, I'm paying for it. 2 Samuel 24. This is repeated twice. 2 Samuel 24, 18. You know, the conceivement of Jesus Christ is only mentioned once. The actual birth of Jesus, I believe, is only mentioned once. This property... That the world fights over. Mentioned twice. And Gad came that day to David. And said unto him. Verse 18. Go up. Rear an altar unto the Lord. In the threshing floor of Arnon. Just a different spelling. The Jebusite. And David according to the saying of Gad. Oh glad Gad taught right. I'm glad Gad quoted from God correctly. If he doesn't, that angel is ready to do destruction. Went up as the Lord commanded. That's a command. It says in First Chronicles, it says here, God commanded. It is an order. Adam, thou shalt not eat of that fruit. And if you do, you're, you're going to die. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not... Uh, 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 Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not covet. Honor thy mother and father. Those are commandments. This is a commandment. Not to me, but to David. And Arna looked and saw the king and his servants coming on toward him. So there's more than this Arna and David and his sons. They're servants. And Arna went out and bowed himself before the king on his face upon the ground. And Aaron said, Wherefore is my Lord, my Lord the king, come to his servant? Now look at that. A Jebus like turning to a Jewish king and say, I'm your servant. And David said, To buy the threshing floor of thee, 
to build an altar unto the Lord, that the plague may be stayed from the people. As far as David's concerned, I got to buy this plague because that angel over there. See that angel over there? Oh, yeah, we seen him. We're hiding from him. If I don't do what God told me to do, which involves your property, we're all doomed. Maybe that's why Ordon was like, okay, I'll give it to you. David has no idea right now where Abraham was. David has no idea that this is going to be where Solomon's going to sit in the most holy place. David has no idea that he's on the land right now where Jesus will walk. He doesn't even know who Jesus is. Don't tell me the Old Testament saints look forward to the cross. What if David, if he knew Jesus was coming? Well, or you see our Messiah is going to come and he's going to, you see that place right there? He's going to kick over those tables right there because they're not, David didn't know. David right now is like, that angel's over there is angry and this is what God's told me to do. I do what God told me to do. To build an altar in the Lord that the plague may be stayed from the people. And Arnim said to David, let my Lord the king take and offer up what seemeth good unto him. Now look at that offering here for second Samuel. Anything. Anything I got, you name it. Anything. Here be the oxen for the burnt off sacrifice. There they are right there. The threshing instrument. And other instruments of oxen for wood. So not in First Chronicles, the, the instruments that are used for wood. We looked at that in Genesis 22. What about the yokes upon the yoke in their wood? Did not Jesus say, take my yoke upon you and I will give you rest? Does not Paul write, I believe it's Timothy, uh, one of the, it says about the, about the oxen, referring them to a preacher. Would not the oxen tread out the corn? Well, he's got to have a, a harness. Did not Abraham lay upon Isaac that wood? It would be kind of hard Look at all the wood that Arnhem's offering. Just to, <laughs> want a fire for the Lord? Man, build a bonfire. Got enough wood. And all these things did Arnhem as... Wait, and all these things did Arnhem as a king gave unto the king. All these things did Arnhem as a king gave unto the king. I'm going to tell you, I have no idea, but what is that statement says, as a king? It didn't say he is a king. He says, as a king. Gave unto the king, that would be David. And Adam said unto the king, that's David. Where is that other king? Why is Arnim referencing as a king here? He's threshing out wheat. That's kind of interesting. We have now two kings here on this hill. Oh, David's a king, right? Would it not be the king of the... This is Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. And Arnon said unto the king, The Lord thy God accept thee. Here it is, here it is all. I hope God approves of it. Well, today... We had in our family ministry where the Bible tells us to go in all the world and preach the gospel. We have some people who, I don't care what God accepts. We don't want it. And there are people who do say, whatever God said, I hope God approves and does something with your preaching. And there are some people, I hope you go to hell with that God and that Bible you preach. This guy's a Jebusite. He's an enemy. Of the children of Israel, he says, hey, I hope God gets approved of this. Here is all. Take it all, David, for God. And maybe that angel has a little thing about, about it. I mean, maybe he wants his life. You can't get Christians today to give up anything to the Lord. I mean, they fold up a dollar so it makes it look like it's more. They, I, I, they, they give an offering envelope and put it in the offering plate and there's nothing in it. I get more and more amazed at things I, I hear of what Christians do and don't do. 
And the king said to Anna, Nay, but I will surely buy of thee at a price. Chronicles said full price. Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God of that which does, does cost me nothing. I'm paying. And then so David, and we'll look at this later. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for the for 50 shekels of silver. We'll look at that later. So here is this place of great history going all the way back to Genesis 22. Here is this place that's going to go all the way to the millennium. And Genesis 22, Mount Moriah, is a type of God and Jesus Christ. And the last time you will see this on this earth will be in the millennium, where God and Jesus Christ are just right there in full fellowship. And if anybody were to give Jesus, and they're not going to, because that flame of fire is coming out of his mouth and his eyes. But if somebody were to walk up to Jesus, what makes you claim this land? Open your Bibles to 2 Samuel chapter 24. Open your Chronicles, 1 first first Chronicles chapter 21. This is why I'm claiming David bought it. But all the enemies won't be burned up, but there it is. And we'll look at this again, and it's going to be very briefly, but we're, this is the title deed of where the Temple Mount is right now. This is the title deed where the Dumb of the Rock is right now. And this is where they say where Michael, one of them angels, went up. Now, this is where Jesus Christ split that veil into two for us after paying full price for our souls. 